The Amazing Spider-Man, Issue Number 3, Spider-Man vs. Dr. Octopus, featuring the Human Torch. A story has to start somewhere, so let's begin with a lonely warehouse in the dead of night. But we find a robbery taking place. Hold it, guys. I think I heard something. Relax, Charlie. It was probably just a mouse. Suddenly, the most awesome image in crime fighting appears on the wall directly above the Star Wars Thieves. Mouse, you've never seen a mouse like this before. Look, it's... It's... Don't be shy, fella. You can say my name. It's Spider-Man. Get him. There are three of us. He can't take us all. Oh, brother, you're living in a fool's paradise. Oof. Ow. Some big criminal mastermind you are. Ah, shut up. Whoever expected Spider-Man to butt in? Look, Joe, Spider-Man's been here. And how? It's almost too easy. I've run out of enemies who can give me any real opposition. I'm too powerful for any foe. I almost wish for an opponent who'd give me a run for my money. And little does Spider-Man suspect that his frivolous wish is about to come true, for at the moment on the outskirts of town... Here comes Dr. Octopus. Dr. Octopus? What do they call him that? Watch it and you'll see in a minute. See, it's that especially designed contraption he wears, which enables him to perform his experiments behind the lead walls, which shield him from radiation. He created that getup himself, and he's the only scientist permitted to wear it. He's the most brilliant atomic researcher in our country today. Yes, such a man is Otto Octavius, better known to his co-workers as Dr. Octopus. Let us watch as he conducts a nuclear experiment. My artificial extra arms permit me to work safely with volatile chemicals which are far too dangerous to touch without protection. Though others fear radiation, I alone am able to make it my servant. But nothing is ever perfect, not even the projects of Dr. Octopress. And as the unsuspecting atomic genius conducts his experiment... Look, the radiation meter has gone wacky. Something's wrong. It's gonna be a blow-up. Sound the alarm. But no warning. The last is given too late, and before the alarm can be sounded, then after the flames and smoke have partially cleared. Dr. Octopus is still breathing. I hope we've reached him in time. Even though he's alive, he's absorbed a great deal of radiation. Poor guy. In the hours that follow after exhaustive tests. The x-rays show an uncertain amount of brain damage. I'm afraid his mind has been permanently damaged. We can't remove those artificial arms off his yet. The radiation has caused him to adhere to his body in some strange way. Finally, days later, the injured scientist recovers consciousness. What am I doing here? Let me up. I must return to my work. No, you've been very ill. You must stay in bed. You need the rest. But then the reign of Dr. Octopus, the brain which has been damaged by radiation, reacts in a bitter way. They're jealous of me. They want to keep me from my work, but I'll show them I'm stronger than any of them. The window is barred. They're trying to make a prisoner of me, the fools. No one can hold Dr. Octopus against his will. No one. And suddenly, at just a suggestion of a thought by Dr. Octopress, his artificial arms move as though they have the will of their own. I've got to break those bars. I did it. My arms did it. Their strength is incalculable. They can do anything. Somehow, my mechanical arms have almost become a part of me. They obey my every command with such power in my brilliant mind. I am the supreme human being on Earth. You wanted to see me, Mr. O Dr. Octopus? Yes, come in. Shut the door behind you. What is it yet? Oh, no. No! Haha, <laughs> you don't believe what you see, but it's true. I'm all-powerful. From now on, I give the commands here. Meanwhile, at the office of J. Jonah Jameson, publisher of the Daily Bugle. I want pictures of the injured scientist, Dr. Octopus, but no one is allowed to enter that blessed private hospital anymore. I never heard of any hospital keeping people out. Don't worry, JJ, I'll get those pics for you. My best men have tried and failed, but so far you've succeeded in every assignment. I can't imagine how a teenager like you does it. Our agreement, JJ, is that you're never supposed to ask me how I do it. Just have a check ready for me when I bring back those pics of Dr. Octopus. He doesn't suspect Peter Parker, the teenager he assigned to the job, is going to have Spider-Man do it.
Here's the place. Strange that it's locked and nobody's admitted. What kind of a hospital is it, anyway? Well, there's only one way to find out, and Spider-Man's just the cat to do it. These suction fingers of mine will get me up the wall in no time. Boy, it's great being Spider-Man. I could do almost anything. The only problem is, my jobs are too easy. I'd welcome a little competition once in a while. And as he steadily climbs up the sheer outer wall, little does Spider-Man dream that he is soon to get far more competition than he ever bargained for. Almost there. Holy mackerel, what's that? Silence. Nobody is to speak when Dr. Octopus speaks. Hearing unseen to the large picture window, Spider-Man witnesses a strange, unexpected sight. You can't keep all of us prisoners forever, Dr. Octopus. We've done what you asked, gotten you all the equipment you wanted. When will you let us go? Not until I'm ready. With my powers, no one can resist me. You'll remain to serve me until I no longer need you, and not before. Well, well, so the good Doc has flipped his lid, eh? Well, this is just what I've been hoping for. A little action. But this is mad. You have no right. Right? You dare speak to me of right? I have the right to do anything as long as I have the power. And if you doubt my power, here is a small sample. No, don't let me down. Looks like it's time for Spider-Man to join the party before he really hurts that fella. Hold it, Doc. How about picking on someone who can fight you back? Spider-Man. Well, I sure ain't Albert Schweitzer. You dare speak flippantly to me, you fool. When I'm finished with you, you'll sing a different tune. You don't think those dumb-looking flappers of yours can move fast enough to catch Spider-Man, do you? Hey, what? Surprise! Dr. Octopus is far more powerful than you dreamed. Far more powerful than even you. Let that one lucky punch go to your head, pal. I've got a few more surprises. Ah, most ingenious of you. You're spider's web. But as you can see, holding only two of my arms isn't enough. I still have more. No time to shoot my web again. He's faster than I expected. But I can still grab his other arms. Oof, it takes all my strength. He... He also has superhuman strength. What? My web? He snapped it. Nobody's ever done that before. And now, Superman, I grow bored with this game. My time is too valuable. Now, watch me trap a spider in a web of my own. A web made of my newfound arms. Your strength is merely that of a spider, but mine is the energy of an atom, born of a nuclear accident. I'm helpless. I can't find all those arms at once. Don't know what to do next. He's just toying with me. You dared to mock me before. Why aren't you mocking me now? Where are your brave words and taunts now, spider? Spider-Man. Or do you realize you've finally met your master, and now you can leave the way you entered? You're no threat to me. Weak, groggy, just barely conscious, Spider-Man has his fall broken by a tree as he finally slumps to the ground in defeat. He beat me. I... I never had a chance. I didn't even give him a good fight. He could have finished me off any time he wanted to. What do I do now? I've never been beaten before, but this time... My spider powers weren't enough. Is this the end of Spider-Man? Not long afterwards at the hospital. Even though I defeated Spider-Man, my prisoners escaped during the fight. I must leave before the police arrive. With my arms, I can go anywhere, do anything. Fences can't stop me, no one can catch me. Now that I've reached my objective, any unlocked window will furnish an entrance for me. The security police aren't apt to notice an extra pipe or two up on the ceiling. Once he's gone, I can act freely. This is what I'm after, the brain center of the entire atomic lab. Once I take it over, the greatest source of atomic power in the nation will be mine. It's an easy matter for Dr. Octopus to unlock a door. Out, all of you. I'm taking over now. D did you see that? It was Dr. Octopus. But what is he up to? Nothing can stop me now. Between my own super strength and the atomic power, which is mine to command, I am the strongest man alive. But first, I'll give the world a demonstration of my strength. I'll destroy part of this planet and rebuild it to suit myself. Something's happening to the lead shielding. It's been lowered. The radiation is starting to escape. Look, the giant machines are running out of control, as though some madman is guiding them. There's too much pressure in the main valves. The pipes are overheating, exploding. It isn't safe to stay here. But within minutes, the source of the trouble is made known. And... We've got to reach Dr. Octopus somehow. We can't. He set up electronic barriers all over the place. 
And before long, the entire plant is evacuated except for... They realize I cannot be stopped and have given up trying. I've won. The plant is mine. I am now in complete control. The foremost brains of the nation's armed forces and security agencies confer feverishly potential will. We've never been up against anything like this. A brilliant scientist with superhuman powers on a mad rampage. If we can't stop them, then we must see that innocent people are not injured. And so the order goes out. No one is allowed in or out of the atomic plant. Can't figure out why they post sentries here. If Dr. Octopus tries to get out, how can we stop him? Meanwhile, one of teenage Peter Parker, alias Spider-Man. Poor Peter's been moping in his room for hours. I wish he'd tell me what's wrong. I'm a failure. Spider-Man is a joke. A nothing. Oh, there's the phone. Mr. Jameson? No, I won't be able to get the pictures of Dr. Octopus. No, I probably won't be able to get any more. Sorry. Yeah. Goodbye. Peter, dear, what's wrong? I can't bear to see you so unhappy. Is there anything I can do to help? No, Aunt May. It's... it's my own personal problem. I'll get over it. Gotta leave for school now. Hello, PD. Say, what's with them? He didn't answer. And there's no one I can talk to. No one who'd understand me. Him. He's down in the dumps. Look like he lost his favorite test tube. Eat, did you hear the big news? The governor's asked the Fantastic Four to try to capture Dr. Octopus. They're busy with another case, but they sent the Human Torch to see what he can do. He's speaking to our assembly today. Oh, big deal. Waiter at the school assembly. I was asked here to tackle Dr. Octopus, but I've used my flame so much recently I have to wait a few days to let it get strong again. While I'm waiting, your principal asked me to address you. If only I had his power, his confidence. But that's easy when you've never been beaten. Now for a little demonstration. I can't apply my total flame, but here are some fiery figures for you. This is what usually happens when the thing helps me with my homework. I get results like this. Then, after a few more colorful demonstrations... Now, for a parting thought, stick to your schoolwork and do your best in your studies. Don't be discouraged if it sometimes seems tough. The important thing is, never give up. Remember that, never give up. Ability alone isn't enough. It's one lesson I learned from my partnership with the Fantastic Four. It's almost as though he's talking to me. Even the Fantastic Four has had defeats, but we always come back. Our motto is never say die. He's right. By golly, he's right. I want to thank you for that speech. I'll never forget what you said today. It meant a lot to me. Huh? Oh, sure, sure. Glad you enjoyed it, fella. Like a man possessed, Peter Parker rushes home to the privacy of his room, and... I guess if the Fantastic Four could be defeated, and then go back for more, Spider-Man can too. Okay, Dr. Octopus, this is it. Now that I know how strong you are, you won't have the advantage of surprise on your side again. This is one easy way to get past those sentries below. Hey, did you just see someone flying above us? Someone flying above us? What are you, some kind of nut? So far, so good. I landed safely on the roof without being stopped. Now to get as close as I can to Dr. Octopus before he discovers me. But the strange scientist has eyes everywhere, and... It's... Spider-Man again. Well, this time he won't be so lucky. This time I'll finish him for good. From now on, I allow no one to interfere with my plans. I will permit no one to defy me. My spider senses warn me of danger behind me. Nice try, Dr. Octopus, but I'm ready for you this time. With my spider senses fully alert and my spider muscles in top condition, he can't possibly hurl those electronic bolts fast enough to hurt me. He knows my every move. He must be watching me on some sort of TV hookup. Well, I'll just go somewhere out of range, as only I can. He found a way to evade my electronic scanners. Hmm, he's cleverer than I thought. But I'll defeat him with my all-powerful arms, as I did before. He won't elude me now. Ah, there's what I'm looking for, the chem lab. Gotta move fast, it won't be long before he finds me. There, it's done. And now, this wiring will suit my purpose just fine. Mustn't make a mistake, Dr. Octopus won't give me a second chance if anything goes wrong. I still can't be sure if this will work, but I've gotta try it. Now, to find Dr. Octopus. Once again, at the last split second, Spider-Man's spider instinct saves him from sudden defeat. Hi, I've got you, Spider-Man. What? Oh, no you don't. Building with every ounce of speed he possesses, Spider-Man manages to limp one of his hastily constructed devices around two of Dr. Octopus's arms before another arm, striking out forces him to drop the second device. 
Oh. But Spider-Man has superhuman strength, even as Dr. Octopus, that he recovers from the blow in seconds, then time to dart out of arm's way. Now to get out of reach and watch what happens. You hope to defeat me with a foolish thing like this. You must be mad. Oh, I see. It's a chemical which fuses my metal arms together. Hmm, clever. But I can take care of that easily after I dispose of you for good. Slowly, inexorably, Dr. Octopus forces Spider-Man back against the wall, blocking his web with his swiftly moving arms. Haha, even your fast-shooting web isn't quick enough for me. He's using his fused arms like a club. I can't retreat any further. My back is to the wall. I've got to take a desperate chance. Got you. But not for long. And then, before Dr. Octopus can make another move, Spider-Man shifts his amazing web directly at the startled scientist's face. I should have realized sooner, Octopus, the best defense is a smashing offense. That blasted web, it spread out over my glasses. I... I can't see. Can't get it off. Even though he can no longer see me, his other arms are now around me, pulling me toward him with incredible strength. Ah, there, I got them off. I've got his two free arms apart, but I dare not let go of them. Give up, fool. Sooner or later you'll have to let go, and then I'll have you. I've got one chance, but I've got to time it to the split second or I'm finished. Suddenly, Spider-Man lets go of Dr. Octopus's arms, and at the same instant, lashes out this snatching Roy look. I did it. I knocked him out. I had to let him go and then strike faster than he could move. Strange that an old-fashioned punch to the jaw defeated the most dangerous villain I've ever faced. Better not take any chances. I'll wrap my webbing around him many times while he's out. He'll never be able to snap this. Later, the sentry post outside the atomic plant. Captain, we've been hearing noises inside there, like a fight. Someone must have sneaked past us and look, over there. It's the sign of Spider-Man. There he is. He's waving to us to come on. Careful, pal. No telling what's going on. You're telling me I'm gonna shoot first and ask questions later. Look, it's Dr. Octopus. He's all tied up and helpless. Don't just stand there. Get me out of this. The authorities will be able to handle Dr. Octopus now, but I still have one more thing to take care of as Spider-Man. Minutes later, the dramatically costumed superhero climbs the sheer wall of a nearby hotel. He's somewhere in this hotel. I'll find him easily. My spider sense tells me that his room is just ahead. Head inside the room in question. Good news, Torch. Your temperature is down and your virus is gone. By now, your flame should be working at full strength. Oh, great, Doc. I want to show my partners in the Fantastic Four that I can tackle Dr. Octopus alone. Flame on. And now for... Relax, Torch. Dr. Octopus has been captured already. Thanks to you, Torch. Octopus is safely under wraps. And I owe you additional thanks because if not for you, Spider-Man might have been finished too. Huh? So long, Torch. See you around, pal. Flame and fireballs. I don't get it. What did I do? The next day, the Human Torch gives a post outing demonstration of his full powers before returning to his headquarters. I wish Spider-Man was still around to join me in the show, but I don't know where he cut out to. Now there's my idea of a hero, the Human Torch, and a guy like Spider-Man too. Why don't you watch and see what a real man is like, bookworm? Someday I'll tell you why, loudmouth, and I'm sure gonna enjoy it. Yes, sir, it's gonna be a real pleasure. And for the first time, a case ends without Peter Parker delivering any photos to Mr. Jameson. But right now, Peter can care less. The end. Well, guys, that was issue three of The Amazing Spider-Man. Peter's still early on in his journey as Spider-Man, but it's pretty cool seeing his kind of start and even seeing him fail and be inspired to never give up. A lesson I'm sure all of us can learn from. But thank you guys for tuning in, and if you enjoy this series, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe for more, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.